Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today's session on Cisco Umbrella. My name's Yoni Fine, and um, I work in the cloud security team within Cisco. I'm a cybersecurity systems engineer. And for the next 40 to 45 minutes, uh, I'm going to discuss how you can um, improve uh, your your and boost your revenue whilst providing value to your customers and your own businesses with our recurring revenue model. So without further ado, during today's session, I'm going to talk about some of the challenges that our customers have been facing and the new security mindset they're now embracing. So now you know your users and data are moving to the cloud, so too are the criminals, unfortunately. And as a consequence, we have to adapt our security practices to this new world in the cloud as well. I'm also going to provide an overview of the Cisco Umbrella platform and a model of how we perform our enforcement and how we build our intelligence. I'm also going to go through the various components that make up our cloud platform. And lastly, I'm going to spend some time talking about the different deployment models that make up our technology and why it's so simple to use. And we'll end with talking about uh, POVs and, uh, and how you can trial the solution, both yourselves and your customers. So the way we work has changed, how we get our work done, where we conduct our business, whether it's at home, working remotely, and connecting to cloud applications on our personal devices, whether it's in the office, to the applications we rely on every single day. Things have changed so much in the last few years. We now have to ensure that we're constantly reviewing our security strategy and making sure that it's being adapted to this new world and making sure that it's still effective. So here is an example of something that happens day in and day out. So let's meet Michelle. She works in the sales team for a manufacturing company and she's always on the go. So let's imagine that today she's finishing up some work at her head office before she's catching a flight to Barcelona for a customer meeting at their regional field office. Now for this meeting, she's created a presentation and, and a proposal using a variety of SaaS applications such as Office 365. And before she arrives in Spain, she's shared the content with her partner and customer contacts using Box, another SaaS application. She's looked at the opportunity record as well in salesforce.com, so she's familiar with the status of the opportunity she's working on. Now, her colleagues mentioned a great new project management application to help her with her sales cycle. So she's downloaded that and connected that application to her Microsoft account. Now, wherever she is, she's always online, and she's browsing the internet while traveling. And I'm sure that sounds familiar with many of you on the call today. And you probably have users who do very similar things. Now, a lot of things have fundamentally changed how users work today. And going back a few years, most, if not all, of the applications and infrastructure that we used in the workplace sat behind a stack of appliances, whether it be a firewall or a secure web gateway or an email gateway or some sort of sandbox technology. We would come into the office environment, log into the network and start working. Now for those working from home, they would connect in via a VPN so their external traffic would be filtered through perimeter security. So if you worked in a remote or branch office, you'd be connected to your applications via an ISR and all your traffic would be backhauled to your head office. Now the focus from a security perspective was to secure the network perimeter. As I mentioned earlier, that world has changed. So if you're at the airport and you need to access Office 365 or your Dropbox account, you're not necessarily going to connect via the VPN to do so. You don't need to. And if you're in a branch office and you're in the IT department and you, need, and you, know, and you notice that most of your traffic is going to the internet and only a small amount is actually going to the head office, then you start thinking about direct internet access. And essentially, more and more happens off the network nowadays. There are more applications, there's more data, 
and more identities or users moving to the cloud. And the business is often driving the use of more SaaS applications. More than ever before, individual employees, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, have control over the applications they use. And the use of cloud applications also makes it even easier than ever before to collaborate and share information with a company or your company or third parties and beyond. In fact, 93% of businesses are adopting cloud technologies right now. And why is that? Well, firstly, more content is being created in the cloud using collaboration tools like Google and Office 365 and Dropbox and Box and many, many others. And proxies are completely blind to that. Secondly, there's an explosion of cloud to cloud traffic, which a firewall has very little visibility of, if at all. So users no longer need to connect to the corporate network to get their work done. They use their cloud applications, like I mentioned before, and they don't always have to turn on the VPN either, which means they're more vulnerable than ever before. And having that lack of visibility and protection is critical. Now this obviously introduces a whole new set of risks. Because of these changes, security is different in the cloud. And here's just an example of some of those. So if users are not on the VPN, that means you've lost all that protection from that stack of security appliances. And because users are often connecting directly to the internet, users are more likely to get infected as a result with malware and other internet-based threats. So take this as an example. You're in a hotel and you hear that the latest episode of Game of Thrones has just been released 18 months earlier and you want to access it. Are you going to go on the VPN to torrent that? I doubt it. So ironically, when you're performing the riskiest behavior, you're least protected. And on top of that, there are also gaps in visibility and coverage because if you can't see the traffic, you can't protect it. And because users have unprecedented ability to access, create, and share information, both with coworkers, partners, and customers, and even the entire internet, there's a big risk of exposure, exposing sensitive information, either inadvertently or maliciously. Furthermore, because users can now install and self-enable applications without vetting from IT, there's a chance they could start using risky applications that demand excessive access permissions. For example, one study showed 64% of applications demand permissions that exceed the required permissions for that particular application to function. So think about an application that requires full access to your Google or Office 365 account, and then has the ability to share information on your behalf. So the potential for damage is pretty staggering, really. <clears throat> so of course, users and applications have adopted the cloud. Well, a survey that Cisco commissioned last year showed that 49% of the workforce is now mobile. In fact, 82% of respondents admitted to not using the VPN when they had the chance, therefore bypassing the security that you've already put in place. We're also seeing a huge increase in SaaS adoption and SaaS usage, as you can see from this statistic here. And now, more than ever before, we're seeing a massive increase in direct internet access from branch offices, which would have been unheard of not so long ago. In addition to that, if you, uh, if you look at Gartner's predictions, by the end of this year, 25% of corporate data traffic is going to bypass perimeter security. So that means that despite all the investments made in security defenses, organizations are only protecting 75% of their network at best. So it's for this reason that our security posture must evolve to address today's challenges and protect the modern organization. We have to protect users wherever they work and like infrastructure and applications and data, this new approach has to shift to the cloud as well. So let me give you a, a brief history lesson for those not so familiar with Umbrella. So 
Cisco Umbrella comes from Cisco's acquisition of OpenDNS, which happened back in 2015. And OpenDNS was formed back in 2006 as a provider of recursive DNS, with a mission of providing safer, faster internet browsing for businesses and home users. In November 2016, OpenDNS was then rebranded to Cisco Umbrella. And now Umbrella is enhanced with an intelligent proxy for deeper inspection. Today, the OpenDNS brand is still available and is used mainly by the consumer market. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, it's increasingly important to have visibility that something malicious is happening. So what's Umbrella? Well, in a nutshell, it provides secure access to the internet. And for those who are not so technical on this call, don't worry. Umbrella is a very simple and effective way to enforce security that uses DNS, a protocol that is built into the foundation of the internet. And examples include every time you click on a bad link in an email, every time you type a URL in your browser, it first makes a DNS request to figure out where you're going. So if we see that where you're trying to connect to is bad, we'll block that connection before it even attempts to connect. And in addition to that, we provide full visibility. So if you have malware on your machine and it did get infected, it has to reach out to a command and control center that tells it what to do, which also uses DNS. So we can block that as well and can then inform the IT, admin, the IT administrator that a machine has been infected and then it needs to be re-imaged. So Umbrella does all of this from the cloud so it scales from the smallest one-man band to the largest enterprise without installing any hardware, without deploying or managing any proxies. And all you have to do is point your DNS traffic to the Cisco Umbrella resolvers. And in order for our customers to be protected, they, they need to change one configuration on their DNS forwarders and point it to two IP addresses that we use and broadcast globally. So we use IP address 208.67.222.222 and 208.67.220.220. And essentially, our cloud security platform provides the first line of defense against threats on the internet wherever users go. So we're able to provide global visibility no matter where your users are connecting from and show you in one place on our web-based dashboard where you can see all of their internet traffic, the places that perhaps they shouldn't be going to that will be blocked and then enforce policy across the network of users wherever they are. <clears throat> So with Umbrella, it all starts with DNS. As I'm sure you've heard, DN as I'm sure you've, uh, you've already heard of DNS before, but I wanna spend a few moments explaining what it is and why it's so important. So DNS is the domain name system, and it's used to map domain names like, for example, cisco.com to an IP address. So to elaborate on this concept, Think about when you go into your contacts list on your mobile phone and you look up the name of the person you want to call instead of trying to memorize everyone's phone number. Well, DNS was first developed for a very similar reason. So you don't have to memorize every single IP address every time you want to visit a particular website. So how it works is when you type in a domain or click on a URL, a request goes to a a recursive DNS service like Umbrella, which looks up the IP address and sends it back to the device so it can make that connection. So when you think why this is so useful from a security perspective, DNS is fundamental to how the internet works and is used by every single device on your network in order to connect to the internet. And that goes with internet of things as well. So for all those of you that use Fitbit devices, or connected refrigerators or dishwashers or even thermostats. It's all using DNS. So we're trying to do something organizations are already doing. They're already relying on something to handle their recursive DNS traffic and it's most likely to be their internet service provider. 
So with Umbrella, we're going to do that plus add security. And it turns out that the same mechanism that's used in all of these internet connections is really useful for uncovering where all of these malicious destinations are on the internet and then block devices from going there in the first place. This data can also be analyzed and then turned into threat intelligence and more importantly, enforced. So think about where you enforce security today and not just you, but your customers as well. You probably have a range of products in your security stack to protect your network and endpoints, whether it's at your corporate head office or branch offices, or even roaming computers and endpoints. And this includes things like firewalls, IDS, IPS, maybe a proxy or sandbox, antivirus, as in antivirus on endpoints, or perhaps email security, and the list goes on and on and on. So when you deploy these solutions, they can take time to implement, sometimes weeks, if not months, sometimes years. And what we hear from our customers is that despite the existing security products they've already deployed, they're still dealing with way too many malware infections and phishing attacks. And there are many ways that malware can get in, which is why it's so important to have multiple layers of security. And because Umbrella is 100% cloud native and a cloud security tool and hosted solely on the internet, security really should start at the DNS layer. And we're not a replacement for other technologies or other tools, but merely as an additional layer that complements what you have already. And of course, you can block malware on your network and endpoints, but why wait until that malware reaches the endpoint when you can block threats out on the internet? So if you consider how malware is often downloaded or how phishing attacks work and how malware can exfiltrate data, it often happens on the internet. So DNS is extremely powerful from a security point of view, as, as I've just mentioned. So it will shed light on the dark traffic that can't be analyzed by standard technologies. And according to stats taken by Cisco's Talos research analysts, 15% of traffic bypasses both web ports 80 and 443. So that means it can't be analyzed by a proxy. They may be able to block the traffic, but they don't have the visibility. And organizations must have that visibility to know that something malicious is happening. So even if it's blocked in the organization, it could still reach the malicious destination if the endpoint or laptop is outside the network. And interestingly, 91% of command and control callbacks can be blocked at the DNS layer because criminals use DNS as a sophisticated mechanism to provide both agility and resilience to their malicious infrastructures. So to kind of emphasize what Umbrella is doing to enforce security, we're using DNS to do this. And when Umbrella receives a DNS request, it first identifies which customer the request came from and which policy to apply. And then the next thing it's going to do is determine if that request is A, safe or whitelisted, and B, determine whether it's malicious or blacklisted. And the third thing it's going to do is determine if that request to a, a particular domain is risky. Now, for all safe requests, we route the connection as, user, as usual, and the user can connect to that domain or that URL or that IP address as normal. Now for any malicious requests, we're going to route those requests to a, um, a customizable block page, which you can configure to your heart's content. Now for any risky requests, this is where it gets very interesting. So where our threat intelligence doesn't have enough information to classify the domain in our block list, we can transparently route the connection to our cloud-based proxy for deeper inspection. So unlike existing solutions in the market that proxy absolutely everything, we only proxy the traffic and enforced control only when it's absolutely necessary. So that means there is no need to deploy pack files or VPNs or tunneling like other technologies. So 
let's spend uh, a couple of moments explaining just very briefly um, how our intelligence proxy actually uh, actually works. So you might be wondering what I mean by a risky domain. So let's start there. So most phishing or malware or ransomware and other internet-based threats are hosted at domains that are classified as malicious. Yet, some domains host both malicious and safe content. And we consider these to be risky domains. So these sites often allow users to upload and share content, making them very difficult to police. And for those that are familiar, an example site may be reddit.com. And unlike traditional web proxies or gateways that examine all internet requests, which often adds latency and complexity, our proxy only intercepts and inspects requests for risky or suspicious domains for further review. Therefore, users don't experience the same performance issues. And once we have identified a risky domain, what do we do or what do we inspect? Well, starting with URL inspection, we use Cisco Talos Intelligence, the Cisco Web Reputation System, and other third-party feeds to determine if a URL is malicious. And if the disposition is still unknown after the URL has been inspected and the web address is for a web-hosted file, you know, it could be a PDF or a JPEG or, you know, something along those lines, we also look at the file reputation as well. So we use antivirus engines as well as the Cisco Advanced Malware Protection or AMP to block malicious files before they're even downloaded. And this is functionality that we launched a year ago. So Umbrella not only protects against initial infection, but Umbrella also prevents command and control callbacks or C2 callbacks. So even if devices become infected in other ways, Umbrella blocks the communication to an attacker's server. So stopping data exfiltration or the download of a ransomware encryption key, command and control callbacks are blocked using the same DNS enforcement process described a moment ago. And in the event that the malicious payload is designed to bypass DNS and use a direct IP connection, Umbrella goes beyond DNS to provide malicious IP blocking and enforcement as well. Unfortunately, threats are continuing to increase in sophistication and attackers are often reusing the same internet infrastructure like web servers, IP addresses and domains in multiple attacks, leaving behind cyber fingerprints. They're lazy at the end of the day. So what if an organization can use those fingerprints to identify emerging attacks as they're being staged and then block them before they launch? So Umbrella uses data from our global network and statistical modeling to uncover this information to stop attacks before the first victim is hit. So now let's talk a bit about the secret source that, you know, that's behind the scenes of Umbrella. So firstly, let me explain our global network, which is truly built into the fabric of the internet. So we peer with over 600 of the top internet service providers and content delivery networks to exchange BGP routes. And that ensures that we're routing requests as efficiently as possible without adding any latency over regional DNS providers. We have built a network of over 25 data centers, soon to be 28, around the world, advertising through any cost. So we always publish and advertise the same two IP addresses that I mentioned earlier, which means we're extremely robust in terms of performance. We've also had 100% uptime of our network since we first established back in 2006. And we also publish our system status on our website as well. So even as the internet population grows, we've been handling close to 2.5% of the world's internet activity for the past five years, which is actually a huge percentage for a single provider. And if you think about Google as a whole, they're seeing about 3% of the internet's traffic. 
So that gives us visibility into where attacks are being staged on the internet. So our view of the internet is really like no other security provider. And um, as well as our, you know, almost 28 data centers around the world that's resolving it's actually more than 110 billion requests. It's actually close to 125 billion uh, DNS requests. And that's across 85 million users, across 160 countries every single day. So not only do we have a massive amount of data, but perhaps more importantly, a very diverse data set. And it's not just from one geography or one protocol or one port. This diversity enables Umbrella to offer unprecedented insight into staged and launched attacks. So that helps us to learn where the threats are coming from, who's launching them, where they're going to, and how wide the net actually is. And this data also acts as the foundation for our many statistical models that I will briefly explain. So without going into too much detail about our models, the important thing to understand is that our approach is completely automated and predictive using both machine learning and human intelligence. So we simply analyze the traffic and apply our predictive detectors to classify domains, both looked up as well. And here are a few examples of those models. We have dozens more, but uh, we can save those for another session. So here's just a couple of my favorites starting with the co-occurrence model. So this identifies domains queried right before or after a given domain. And this model helps us to uncover domains linked to the same attack, even if they're hosted on separate networks. So we have another example here as well called the spike rank model. So if you think of the uh, music app Shazam, which uh, has just been acquired by Apple actually, it looks at sound waves to match the song you're looking for. So in terms of Umbrella, this algorithm recognizes when spikes in traffic to a domain match patterns seen with other attacks. For example, the traffic for one domain matches the request patterns seen with exploit kits or phishing or ransomware. So we'll block that domain before the full attack is actually launched. We also have one other, which we see very often, which is the natural language processing model. And this helps us to uncover attackers who are using spear phishing by spoofing a domain so that it looks like it's coming from a legitimate company or brand. So if you think about domain like Amazon.com, you may have seen in the past an email come through from Amazon123abc.com, which is obviously not a legitimate site. Now, before I continue, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to um, add those questions to the Q&A panel on the GoToWebinar chat, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you have at the end of the session. Now, every single day, and believe it or not, Umbrella is actually discovering more than 3 million new domains being spun up all the time. And by analyzing this traffic with our statistical models, Umbrella can identify over 60,000 malicious destinations. So, so that includes domains, IP addresses, and URLs. And you not only need threat intelligence, but you also need the ability to act on this data. So we have the horsepower to actively enforce more than 7 million malicious domains and IP addresses at the same time a DNS request is being processed. And when I say enforce, I mean blocked. And appliances and hybrid cloud solutions can't come close to that kind of scalability. So now let's talk a little bit about um, deploying the solution. Now Umbrella is one of the simplest solutions to deploy and manage. And I'm not just talking about from Cisco's perspective, but as a security or networking tool, it really is extremely simple. And because Umbrella is delivered from the cloud, I mentioned this earlier, but there is no hardware to install or software to manually update. And the browser-based interface provides quick setup for ongoing management. So many customers actually deploy enterprise-wide 
in less than 30 minutes. Now in terms of on-network coverage, you can protect all your devices on your network, even those you don't own, by changing one setting in your network server, access point or router. And all you have to do is point your DNS request to the two IP addresses that make up the Umbrella Global Network that I mentioned earlier. Umbrella also has pre-built integrations with many networking devices, including the Cisco ISR4K series and Cisco wireless LAN controllers. And because Umbrella is integrated with Cisco ISR4Ks to provide protection to branch office users and Cisco wireless LAN to provide guest Wi-Fi, this also helps to protect employees. So customers can simply upgrade to the latest network device software and configure the connection via our Umbrella API. Now for off-network coverage, this gets very interesting. So we provide protection both for users who are on the network and off the network. So if you think about all your roaming users and laptop users and remote users that work from home, this is where you need the protection. So if you use Cisco AnyConnect, you can simply enable the umbrella roaming security module for protection wherever the users are, even when the VPN is off. Now, if you're not a Cisco AnyConnect VPN user, that doesn't matter. We have a very lightweight standalone agent that works with any VPN and has been proven in over 185 million deployments. And our roaming client is a virtual bump in the wire, so to speak, for every internet connection. It's so transparent to users, it doesn't cause any latency or performance issues because the footprint is so minuscule. So if you consider some of the products listed on this slide, some of which you may have heard of, some of which you may have already deployed for your customers, um, they may be using some of these existing tools for their security stack. They might be using a multitude of other appliances and applications. So Umbrella has an API for integration with existing solutions and workflows, both third party, partner, and custom in-house to extend protection. And leveraging appliance-based detection, we can easily integrate intelligence from on-premise threat detection security appliances like FireEye. So when they have valuable intelligence, that can be fed directly into Umbrella automatically. So this can extend both local security and enforce protection across all locations and roaming users without installing an additional box, okay? Now in terms of other threat intelligence platforms, we can share intelligence from an aggregated source for threat intel like Anomaly. Um, and that can all be done through Umbrella. And if you think about other threat analysis feeds, you can add malicious domains sourced from threat analysis uh, technologies to act faster on indicators of compromise. So for example, malicious domains uncovered by AMP Threat Grid, those can be added to Umbrella automatically. So you can start blocking threats immediately without any manual intervention. We also have up to 10 custom integration scripts with other in-house tools. And these integrations allow custom scripts to add or remove domains from security categories to enforce different policies on each. So an example would be uh, maybe a custom IPS system used by you know, an organization to leverage the Bro framework. And we also have a number of Python scripts that you can leverage as well. Now, Umbrella Investigate, which is all part of Umbrella, but this is your, um, your uh, dashboard that will give you access to all of our intelligence about IP addresses and domains across the internet. Now, in a single correlated source or dashboard, Investigate provides the most complete view of all of the relationships and evolution of domains, IP addresses, autonomous systems, and therefore adds that security context needed to help you uncover and predict threats. So through a simple cloud-based user interface with an additional set of optional APIs, if you wanna use them, you can add context in your investigations. 
So investigate leverages a live graph database of DNS requests and other contextual data. So we take this massive amount of information and apply our statistical models and algorithms, and we can apply those to it. And this helps us automatically discover and predict malicious domains and IP addresses. As well as that, this information also um, helps organizations to enrich existing security data. So if they're using a SIM tool like ArcSight, for example, or Splunk, or Logarithm, just to name a couple, you can um, use this threat intelligence to feed that data into, into your SIM. So we can also provide access to this intelligence via a web-based console and API. So what sets Umbrella apart from other products? Well, by far, we're the fastest and most reliable cloud infrastructure. So when customers connect to our cloud security platform, performance is absolutely critical. You don't want it to break or slow down the internet. And as I mentioned earlier, since our network was first established back in 2006, we've had 100% uptime. And not just that, we have peering relationships with hundreds of internet service providers, which allows us to resolve requests much, much faster. And most customers actually report a boost in their internet speed. So leveraging our bi-directional APIs, customers can easily integrate Umbrella with their existing tools to automatically add um, to our platform to enhance security. And leveraging our predictive intelligence, we enable our customers to uncover malicious domains and IPs and URLs before they've even been used in attacks. And without installing or deploying any hardware or manually updating software, it's extremely easy to deploy. It's just a question of changing your DNS forwarders to two IP addresses and switching from your internet service provider or any other external entity to Umbrella. And customers can leverage the existing Cisco footprint to provision thousands of network devices and laptops. And not only do we have the power of the malicious domains and IP addresses that we've had in Umbrella before, but we also have coverage for malicious files that are attempting or attempted to be downloaded from risky domains. And this is through the power of Cisco AMP Threat Grid. And why are we winning against the competition? Well, we did a survey of our customer base last year as to why they chose Umbrella. And this, is, this was across 200 POCs or POVs. And the number one reason stated by our customers was ease of deployment. And after that was because of simple management. So Umbrella is really, it's not a typical security product that's going to take weeks and months to deploy. It's going to be up and running faster than anything else out there. So it has an incredible quick time to value for our customers. And it also doesn't have the ongoing maintenance costs that a lot of other products have. And the other thing I hear from customers is consistent protection, both on and off network with better threat intelligence. So at the end of the day, we're going to find things that other products don't. And customers simply deploy Umbrella as an added layer of protection that is super quick to get up and running and is the fastest way to benefit from Cisco's threat intelligence. So here is an example of, a, of an automotive supplier with uh, over 2,500 users across seven facilities. And their main issue was the amount of um, sensitive data that they held. So they wanted to proactively strengthen their security before a major attack uh, was made. So that was really their number one or primary reason for, for deploying Umbrella. And within a matter of hours, they were up and running. They were a pretty large organization. And they saw up to 50% reduction of alerts from their antivirus and IPS system. And they were also able to reduce their remediation time when, uh, when it came to having to re-image uh, machines due to threats that we uncovered. And they were able to reduce that by about 20% as well. So now we've discussed Umbrella and, 
and, uh, and how it works, I want to briefly talk about Cisco's cloud security vision. So we want to take all the capabilities that are in the stack of security appliances and recreate them so they can be delivered in the cloud. And we also want to have the capabilities that can solve the new problem that direct internet access poses. So we started with Umbrella in terms of DNS layer protection. And what we've done over the last 12 months is add secure web gateway and proxy features. So we're not a web gateway, but we provide proxy and gateway type features. And we can now proxy HTTP traffic and scan files traveling over that protocol with traditional antivirus and anti-malware protection with Cisco AMP. 18 months ago, we acquired the CASB vendor CloudLock so we can secure users and data in public cloud applications such as Google and Office 365 and Dropbox and Box and Salesforce. And now we have a fully operational engineering team within Cisco so we can bring out a whole new set of capabilities such as application visibility and control, also known as Shadow IT, and that's going to be launched next month. We're also adding sandboxing from AMP Threat Grid and port and protocol protection, as well as new data centers in the Middle East and South America. So not only that, we're continuing to leverage our integrations into Cisco's on-premise technologies, such as building out further connectors to the AnyConnect VPN and the ISR 4K and Cisco Wireless, as well as Meraki and Veptella. And what's interesting is that Cisco is enabling its customers to deliver security both on-premise and in the cloud, whilst helping our customers to transition from an on-premise world to the cloud by tying that security transformation to the network transformation that's been happening across all sectors. And we're only just scratching the surface. So there's going to be a lot more exciting announcements to come over the next few months. I also want to uh, discuss very briefly about an umbrella POV. So why do we think it's important for you to talk about umbrella with your customers and, and why we think they should actually try it themselves with a proof of value? So trying a technology is super, super simple. Um, it, the easiest in all of Cisco's product portfolio. And as I mentioned earlier, if you think about Cisco products as a security products as a whole or network security, it's by far um, the quickest and simplest to configure. So customers can just point their DNS traffic to us and they can sign up or you can sign up on their behalf with a free trial. Um, you just have to enter and fill in a couple of details in six easy fields. We can even give you um, a customized um, URL as well, so it actually registers your domain so it can be tracked, okay? And uh, so you can go to signup.umbrella.com, you can use our customized um, URL as well, just let us know and we can do that for you. And fill in those six easy fields with the account, um, the administrator email address, and they'll receive a welcome email. And then on their side, they point their DNS by changing the configuration on their server or guest Wi-Fi, and they'll start seeing the results immediately. And at the end of the trial, or at the end of the POV, you can request a detailed security report that will show you what we uncovered and how we uncovered any attackers, as well as revealing the techniques used by our security researchers to discover and predict these attacks. So this is a snapshot of what the security report looks like. And with this free report, which is available at the end of the POV, you'll not only see which threats were blocked and devices that were infected, but you'll also learn how Umbrella discovered those attacks using visualizations that correlates your local activity with Umbrella's global visibility of attackers infrastructure to show you when and where we protected you. We'll also show you um, videos with the Umbrella security research team revealing the techniques that they used to discover and predict these attacks. So typically, 
we will generate this report after about 14 days or 30 days to give you maximum results. What you'll also find is that um, across the you know, 200 plus POVs that were conducted last year, these are, you know, after analyzing the stats, 82% of our customers encountered ransomware that umbrella blocked and 77% encountered phishing that we stopped. And this is really game changing. So whether it's a small company to a large enterprise, they're all going to see these threats blocked by umbrella because of the nature of the technology. So customers already have a variety of other security products, which I discussed earlier, but they're still going to see these kind of results with umbrella. And that's because we're the gateway to the internet. So we're going to see all of those connections and stop those threats. And as I said, over a short period between 14, 30 days, we're seeing these high numbers of threats across all of these POVs, even though the majority of these organizations are already running a combination of firewalls and antivirus and malware protection and other security tools. So with an umbrella POV, we're gonna provide insight into these threats and attacks that are already being missed by other tools. So what's new? Well, I wanna mention something that we just released this month, or in fact, just before Christmas, we announced it back in August, but something we're very excited about. We've been working very closely with Apple for the last two years to launch the Cisco Security Connector, which combines two great technologies into one. So that includes Umbrella and Clarity, which is the iOS version of um, anti-malware protection or AMP as we refer to it. So this is for all iOS devices. So your um, iPhones, your um, uh, iPads, um, in supervised mode. So once deployed, it protects users from connecting to malicious URLs and domains and IP addresses, as well as monitoring network and application traffic from the device. And the security connector application gets seamlessly deployed from Umbrella or AMP dashboards using the Cisco Meraki Systems Manager or RMDM solution. Thanks to a deep Cisco native integration that we've been working with Apple on, and the uh, engineering team is currently evaluating additional MDMs as we speak. We have two bundled solutions. So the first bundle includes Umbrella and AMP for endpoints and provides an immediate 12% discount for your customers. And the second bundle includes Umbrella, AMP for endpoint and Meraki that provides an immediate 15% discount. Now here are some key resources that I think will be very valuable for yourselves when conducting POVs going forward. And something that we're gonna be launching in February is uh, the Umbrella Partner POV console. So this will allow you to spin up trials on behalf of your customers and see high level metadata. So you can spin up your own trials for Umbrella, determine which package you want them to have, how many users, and typically they'll have a 21 day trial for this. And if that needs to be extended for another 10 days, then you will be able to do that and manage that process without, um, without requiring any Cisco assistance. Obviously we're still here for you, but if you wanna do this yourself, you can manage that whole process. And what you'll also see is a summary of the kind of things that we've uncovered. So, you know, what domains we've unblocked, what we've contained, all that kind of stuff in terms of high level visibility. So you can go back to your customer and say, um, let's take a deeper dive. Let's show you what Umbrella is actually doing and what, what it's pr protecting you against. So you can then take further action. So something we're very, very excited about and gives you much more enablement uh, to help your customers without necessarily involving um, personnel from Cisco. And uh, something else that we're also very, very excited about and to emphasize our track record in the market is uh, for me to mention um, our award that we won back in November and Umbrella was actually voted the most innovative security product of the year in uh, 2017. And finally, here's some calls to action for you. So um, 
And to end the session, I want to highlight some of the key things that you can use and leverage right now. Most notably is the Cisco Umbrella Partner Portal, which will give you all the resources you need to get started, whether it's self online training and videos, data sheets, case studies, learning how to demo the solution. So Cisco actually provides a D-Cloud platform. So it's a cloud platform which enables you to demo and utilize and leverage pretty much all of Cisco's products without you having to install anything. The only thing we require you to have is a Cisco ID. So you can register for a Cisco login via cisco.com and you'll be able to log into the uh, dCloud dashboard and uh, search for any Cisco product that you want to demo. It also provides information about, um, uh, you have demo videos, you've also got story guide and demo scripts and all that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing is the Umbrella POV Best Practice Guide. So this provides you with a one-stop shop, detailed instructions as to what you need to do to complete a successful POV. Um, so how to deploy, how to configure, how to manage, all that really, really useful stuff. This is the guide to read to get, uh, to get learning. We also provide you information about how to order uh, umbrella as well via our CCW um, ordering uh, platform as well. And last but not least is an umbrella NFR. So for any uh, partner that um, completes the online training and views the online videos and completes a very short multiple choice exam, you'll be entitled to a free NFR license for your organization, whether it be for demo purposes, and for any technical SEs out there or pre-sales consultants, um, they'll also be entitled to their own personal umbrella NFR license as well. At the end of the day, we want you to, to use the solution. We want you to love the solution. And this is our way of saying thank you and uh, by giving you uh, a free NFR license. And if anyone has any questions now, please feel free to, um, to reach out to me on the online chat or Q&A panel. And, um, and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer those questions. So let's have a look to see if we've got any. Um, so let me just uh, open up my screen. Um, let's have a look. See if we've got any questions. Okay, so we have one question so far. Um, how is this licensed? Well, that's a really great question. Um, and one that is most common for obvious reasons. Well, because Umbrella is a cloud platform, it's subscription. It's a subscription model, an annual subscription. And it's purely based on the number of users you have on your network. So regardless of how many endpoints you have, regardless of how many networks or wireless access points, it's purely driven based on the number of users that you have, okay? And for more detailed information on pricing itself, again, I'd recommend you to uh, look at our ordering guide, which will be available on our sales portal that I mentioned a few moments ago. Um, and you'll be able to see more information there. Any other questions? I'm still gonna be around for another couple of minutes, so I will stay online. I guess I've done my job today and uh, I've preempted any questions that you have, but like I said, I'll stick around for another few minutes and see if any more questions come up. But in the meantime, I'd like to say thank you for joining today's webinar on Cisco Umbrella. I hope you found it useful and informative and uh, please reach out to your uh, local sales account manager from the cloud security team and we'll be more than happy to assist.